I'm here with Thomas and Sieb of Angus McSix to talk about the debut record and the Angus McSix and the Sword of Power. I, I love the title. Coming out April 21st on Napalm Records. How are you both doing today? Thank you very much, Pedro. Thanks for the invitation, first of all. And uh, I'm actually doing great. D d d beside uh, working the whole day, I'm really glad that I'm here now with you and having this interview. It, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I didn't think either one of you was going to accept my invitation for, for a chat, considering that I've poked some fun, some some little fun uh, on <laughs> Angus McSix and, 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 and the whole thing. I, I didn't know uh -huh. if you guys were going to be good sports. Uh, I, I thought maybe sending you guys a WhatsApp message and see what, what was happening, but I'm glad that you guys are uh -huh. here. We actually love... We love, we love some good humor, you know, so uh, <laughs> we're really gra glad for the invitation and it's great to actually talk to you um, face to face finally. And I think it's same for you as well, right? Yeah, I mean, actually, I, I will have to say, like, even if you hated it, you know, like totally, totally hated it by, by your, like, wholeheartedly, um, <laughs> it... Uh, you know, it it wouldn't piss me off or anything because everyone has has his opinion, everyone has his own taste. There are a lot of bands that I don't like myself or the music, whatever. I wouldn't say I necessarily hate something, but if I don't like something, I just skip it. You know, but um, you know, if my approach was to um, to be loved by the world, uh, I I wouldn't have even started a metal band in the first place. You know, <laughs> like, so, so uh, there is a very good point. Now yeah. let, let me ask you both th this question, maybe more for you, Thomas. Uh, when, once the glory left your hammer and you're left with the sort of power in your hand, uh, what was the time between losing one and gaining the other? How was that time for you? Um, actually, it was quite a, a short period, to be honest, because Sid wrote me, I think, the, the second day after the whole dismissal stuff with Glory Hammer. And uh, so it was quite quick. Uh, the first day, obviously, was was quite shocked as everyone else was, but then I thought, you know, I'm probably just better off, to be honest. And uh, when Steb wrote me, and there were some other bands also writing me quite uh, instantly, and uh, it was quite a no-brainer to accept the the invitation of Sid because I knew that he was a hit machine, you know. So I always wanted to work <laughs> with a guy like him because actually, I think it was like when I was 19. When I first heard a, a live song of Sabe, and I thought, hmm, this guy actually is pretty good. And so, uh, yeah, it's it's kind of like uh, coming home, basically, uh, with Sabe. So, so you were the mastermind behind this whole thing? Me? Yeah. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't necessarily. I wouldn't necessarily say mastermind, but it. Uh, Evil let genius. me say I was. Yeah, I, I was the guy who contacted Tommy in the first place. You know, because uh, I think. Um, um, let's be totally fair here. Chris Bose is an amazing songwriter. He's really good at what he does. Uh, but I totally, uh, I always thought that Tom basically is what made Glory Hammer be like the, the the band that stood out from the crowd, you know, because I think he's an amazing entertainer, really, really great singer. And when I read that he was out of the band, I was like, man, you, you can't just let this guy like be like somewhere in the countryside. <laughs> <laughs> and sit there, count cows or whatever they do in Switzerland, and so uh, I was like, uh, "Yeah, how is it going? Do we have like other plans, or should we like, just maybe start something new?" You know, and uh, yeah, but I, I do, I do actually think it was almost on the the, the on the same day, and uh, it was like uh, maybe I need some time to lick my wounds or something. I did, I think he licked for like. 12 hours or so because <laughs> the next day it was like okay let's go let's get on the phone so we yeah, all I'm the guy who just wants to wait and sit on my ass and do nothing you know um i like to go forward and um i knew that this was a great um opportunity to start something new because there were some other bands actually i was a fan of even who asked me to sing with them and uh, that was quite tempting but then um i thought you know i will still be just a guy who sings for a band then and um, this it's better to you know create something new from scratch it of course it also has some um some backside of uh, like uh, it's not only positive to start something new because you have to build up a brand again um which i've done before with glory hammer for 10 years and um, now we basically started a, a bit further back again not not from scratch but still and uh, that was quite a uh, hard uh, hard work um, but with this team, with Seb, 
And with the other two guys, um, it worked out quite well, to be honest, quite so quickly as well. For sure, that the sword is mightier than the hammer. But we also know that the pen is mightier than the sword. And, and when I look at the lyrical content that you guys put on this record, I, I, I'm tempted to agree with that statement. Uh, how much fun and, and how much work it was to create lyrical content that ties in the past with the present, maybe throws a couple of jabs here and there. It, it's pure genius. How, how much work was oh, it? Thank you. Uh, glad to hear that. Uh, but, uh, actually, it was even more because Sam asked me to write a song that has ACDs, the lyrics in it as well. So <laughs> that came on top of that. But uh, it was it was a lot of work. But um, since I really like writing stories, write stuff or invent new stuff, um, it also was a lot of fun to do. So uh, it's always like that. Basically, in music, it should be a good balance of work and fun. Otherwise, if, it, if it's just work, if it's just about money, it starts to suck, you know, quite quickly. It really has to be a good balance of both. Were you involved, Steve, in, in some of the lyrical content or everything fell on, on top of Tom's shoulder? No, I would say it's like uh, like most of the musical stuff is for me. Most of the lyrics is from Tom. Um, but of course, there are like uh, parts where we cross, uh, cross each, each other's path. Um, and uh, there, so there have been some hook lines from me and there have been also musical ideas from Tom. So I, I, I couldn't even tell anymore which part is from who and uh, uh, one thing I uh, I wanted to mention as well is uh, because you said like throwing uh, some jabs here and there um, like like especially also this line glory left my hammer which uh, like like some of the people like when you read the comments like I, I do think a lot of the people actually take it too seriously and, and think that we are salty or something <laughs> it was actually it was actually meant a lot more in a way that we just wanted to connect the character to what was there before so that you see how the, the, the history is, the heritage, whatever, but then go on our very, very own uh, story and our very own storyline, our very own universe that doesn't necessarily have so much to do with, with what has been there in the past, you know? And so that was more, I mean, I under, I see why people would, would think this might appear to be salty, but it wasn't meant in that way. And there's a, like, at least from my side and, I do think also not from Tom's side, there's no bad blood or anything. It was totally like from our side, I totally settled. And uh, we, we don't care anymore about that at all. You know, we just want to do our thing and uh, we have such a great time to do our stuff together and, and everything. So yeah, that's the, the current situation. When you, when you look at a, at a debut album that it's going to become, it's a concept album, but it's a debut album. You're trying to bridge the past of the character with the present and future. Uh, how important is that debut record become in terms of bridging those gaps and, and, and creating a new storyline and creating a new, almost a whole new universe? I mean, um, in the end, it's, it's important to um, get the old fans on board as well. But with Angus Max 6, I think the, um, the horizon is much, much further than that. We have a lot more people that we could actually attract through the music now because the music itself is a bit more commercial i'd say it's a bit less power metally classic and uh, therefore there's also other people who wouldn't necessarily listen to just metal you know who who might like agnes max six so also story-wise um in the future we, we have some plans you know what we want to do and uh, it'll be much more open than just focus on dundee and uh, yeah, that kind of stuff, which is fun, but uh, it's, it was a bit too narrow in the end, you know. It was, the concept was a bit too narrow. So uh, we have plans to, to uh, broaden this up in the future and uh, bring Angus to our current time, and th there's endless options we can do there. Wow, that's really exciting. I mean, uh, I'm sure you, you, you're going to run out of, uh, of characters to fight of unicorns and all sorts of other stuff, so... <laughs> bringing into the more modern world that's a really interesting idea and that really opens a lot of doors creatively uh musically lyrically from from all all standpoints now you mentioned the music maybe not being your as traditional power metal sound it's a very synth driven record i think that's the thing i'm, I'm i think i'm a, i'm not alone uh when when anybody listens to the album they're going to feel that uh what inspired that more synth driven sound when you have two outstanding guitar players in the band, <laughs> it's, uh, are if you I, outstanding? Sid? I'm not sure. 
Um, <laughs> I, 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 I will have to practice a little bit more to be outstanding again. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think I, I know I know how to use that thing, but um, no, um, like talking about the music, I'm mean, also that like uh, when I see people write stuff like like irgendwie okay, I let's throw um throw in some German words. It's amazing. Ich spreche einfach Deutsch die ganze Zeit. Das ist auch eine gute Idee, damit du einfach gar nichts mehr verstehst. Great thing. Okay, so um, no, I, I uh, we we didn't want to copy what was there before we want to do our own thing uh from the from the get-go basically you know so this is uh why i also said like it, it was important for us to to connect the character so that people know where we're coming from basically but i think uh, tom and me were on the very very same page from the yeah from the beginning from what we wanted to do musically um that is basically like heavy metal with um like like Art. 80s <laughs> pop influences and like mix in everything that feels right and do like all these crazy stupid stuff have you heard the record like completely yeah yeah, yeah that, uh, like for example times. When, times. yeah but so like for example uh, the song uh, right to hell that was basically um when uh, we were talking about like like uh yeah stretching the boundaries of what we could do i was like oh okay let's let's give him like Full blown techno here and let's see what he says you know <laughs> sending over this idea and tom is like it's great and i'm like yeah i agree it's actually great let's do it you know and and it's basically i think right to hell is my my most favorite track of the record now so um yeah, yeah. it's uh, it, it's not not meant to be a power metal band it's it's a metal band like metal pop whatever yeah i i completely agree and i'm sure there will be some very narrow mind metal fans who will hate it you know so uh i'm looking forward to those reactions as well but so far i'm actually quite uh amazed that people are uh accepting the music so well uh, if i if i look at the comments on uh, youtube especially it's like uh everyone seems to love it and this is not what i what we were expecting to be honest <laughs> That's pretty cool. And that actually brings me to a different question because uh, when you look at the singles, uh, was there a decision for the singles because of uh, because the way they set the story? Because if you look at the track listing, uh, the story does start with Master of the Universe, then moving into Six Caliber. So was that the reason for the singles to be in that order? Because when I heard Six Caliber, I was like, "This should have been the first single. This is outstanding. How is this not <laughs> the first single?" <laughs> All right, actually. The thing is, if you don't have the physical copy of the album, uh, you won't know what the actual lore tracklist will be because we have two different tracklists, basically. The one tracklist that people just listen to is the music tracklist. And we thought, you know, that these are the, the more banger songs in front and maybe the a bit less on the <laughs> in the back. But, um, but then I, I wanted to have other tracks first because I wanted to have the lower track list obviously and say nah we can't do this so um, if you have the physical copy of the album it's the only way you will know the how the story actually goes so the the first song would be obviously the intro one and uh, this is um, the one that's called uh, Vision Visions in the Fire so this would be the first track actually and then it goes from there but it's not what uh, everyone else is uh, thinking it would be you know? Oh, that's really interesting. I didn't know there was multiple because I assume the the album that I got was the list that it was. So it is the list. <laughs> it is the list that it will be released like this, like on Spotify and everything. And it's also the track track list on the CD. But if you want to read the story in the correct order, then you will have to move the track list by yourself. Like to put it. Uh, I mean, maybe we can we can give away a little bit more. So the first track would be Visions in the Fires. The second track would be Eternal Warrior. So that is like how they connect. And then, but in the booklet, you you can if you figure out like this really stupid riddle, then you can <laughs> you know what, the correct, what the correct order of the tracks would be. Because I I felt like the story while giving some sense of completion at the end. Is there's a little bit of a cliffhanger at the end. It's an album that really has a start, middle, and end, but the end doesn't really end. It just kind of opens the doors to maybe what the next record is going to be all about. Was that the idea from the beginning to kind of leave it open-ended like that? Absolutely, um, because uh, we, we introduce a new enemy, a uh, very mighty enemy. So uh, we want to have him just appear basically at the very end of the story. 
it, it, he's mentioned before that, but it's just like way back, there was a guy who was like, you know, the big evil. And uh, at the end of the story, this guy actually comes back from the hell of hell. So this is basically where the story will start. And um, <laughs> yeah, from there we go to the, to the second album and then, you know, have to jump to our current time. But we'll leave this to later, you know. I, I feel really, I must tell you guys, I feel really bad for Dundee. I mean, they've had unicorns, they had fireflies of doom. I, I'm glad that you guys are moving into a different time because otherwise yeah. the poor city of Dundee, I mean, they might as well just pack it up and go home or go to a they different had they, they definitely had enough, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Are, are, are you guys done with, with completely having some menace destroy that city? Uh, well, you never know what, what will come, you know. So, Never say never, but for now, I guess it's time to move on and to, you know, there's, there's more places on Earth than just in the... Uh, we, we've, I've said that Sieb is an outstanding guitar player. He doesn't agree with me, but that's fine. Uh, but I'm also going to say that, uh, Tom, you're an outstanding vocalist, uh, without a shadow of a doubt. I think you're one of those guys that uh, we can throw any song at you and you're going to make the song a thousand times better. You just have that that ability within you. And this album definitely showcases once again that ability. Uh, what's the birth of that ability? Like, do you work on it constantly? Do you take lessons? Like, what's your regimen? Mm, yeah, I mean, in the end, it's a, uh, it's part part. It's talent, of course, and it's also hard work. So you have to practice to uh, to keep the voice what it is. Um, and it's a lot of technique. It's a lot of. Um, having fun with, with the voice as well. So basically when I sing, I, I sing for fun and I try to emulate uh, different voices and see if I can do it, you know, from, from other singers. And um, that's basically my training. And then I try to add my own style to it to make it my own. Uh, yeah. So that's basically how it works. Do, do you uh, change things when it comes to the live shows? Do you prepare differently when you have to be on tour in order to keep that same delivery, in order to keep that same expectation uh, that fans have of you? Yeah, for live shows, it's always a, it's a, always a hard time for every singer, I guess. You always have to, to keep yourself healthy. That's the most important part. So if, you, if you're on a tour bus with like 15 other guys for over a month uh, and one guy gets sick, it's quite hard to stay healthy. So I, I eat a lot of vitamin pills when I'm on tour, uh, drink some tea, no, basically no alcohol at all. And that kind of helps, but it's always dangerous because you never know when you, especially when you're on the way in the, in winter time to not get a cold, you know? So, um, yeah, that, that's the, the thing I'm most afraid of to catch a cold on tour. But beside that, it's just, um, the regular things you do like sleep enough, um, drink enough water or tea and uh, just eat what's what's healthy more or less, I guess. Well, that's what you could the, do. The, the, sorry, go ahead. I, I, just, I just really wanted to add, this is like the, the worst thing about being a singer. I mean, I love being a singer myself. But um, the thing is, you know, like you can have like a, a really bad cold and almost not be on your legs and uh, almost not able to stand, but you can still play guitar. Um, that is not a problem, but when your voice is fucked, your voice is fucked, you know, this is like, um, it happens and it happens to, to the best out there, you know, so it is, um, you will just have to, what Tom just said, you will tr just try to stay healthy, but if you're fucked, you're fucked, you, there's nothing you can do about that. Well, well now that perhaps one of the hardest things, it's almost over the hump, the album is coming out in, an, in a couple of weeks, April 21st on Napalm Records. Are you guys looking now beyond the record, talking about touring, talking about live shows, and, and taking Angus McSix on the road? Because people mm. are dying to see you guys perform these songs live. Yeah, I mean, we have a lot of plans to actually also come to the USA one day. Um, we love to, to tour there as well. And uh, for this year, we, we just planned some festivals, actually some really great festivals, to be honest. I uh, never expected to play at Wacken on the main stage, you know. Kind of, that kind of stuff with a new band that knows songs out. Um, beside that, we'll be on tour with Feuer Funds for five shows. And um, for next year, we also have planned a tour already, but I can't announce it yet, obviously. But um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of live plans, especially for the show. 
I think we'll try to, you know, to just make it one better as well. Like I really wanted to have a laser shooting dinosaur on stage yeah. one day. And we're on it. <laughs> if somebody can do it as you guys, I'm sure you guys can figure, figure <laughs> out how to make something like that work. Now, when it comes to to putting these shows together, uh, are, are you guys going to concentrate on Angus Mc6 and Angus Mc6 only? Or, or is there going to be some room for some blasts from the past? You know, <laughs> me personally, I, would, <laughs> I said we should probably do a song that I wrote for Glory Hammer. But um, the other guys think it's a bad idea. Yeah, what, what do you think? Wow, it's a tough, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. I... I, I I don't think there's a bad decision here. I think if you go if if you really want to um, honor the present and and really set the new chapter, then I think you have to go with Angus Mc Six. And there's enough material there on this record to 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 set that bar. I think if you connect with the past, then that connection is never going to leave you alone. You you always going to be looking behind your back versus con concentrating on what's in ahead of you. That's my humble opinion. I'm sure a lot of fans right. like. This guy, this bald guy, doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. But <laughs> I'm really I'm glad to have an outside opinion because sometimes it's hard, you know, if you if you're in your in a band, it's really hard to see how other people might see it. That's actually that was also a quite big concern in the beginning because before we released any song, I didn't know how people would react to us. So I was afraid, like, oh, it could actually all go wrong, you know. But then it's a big relief that you see people love it. And it's always good to have other opinions. That's what basically is the most important thing. And uh, the only thing, you know, I would I would say we should probably play some old songs as well. Is uh, if if we would we would play songs, then it would have to be songs that I wrote or, or participated in writing, like "Universe on Fire" or something like that, because this doesn't really have a too close connection to uh, what my old band is. But I also understand Seep, and I accept your opinion, Seep. So uh, let's just stick to Angus Maxix for now. Yeah, you, you agree with me, right, See, I totally agree with you because, uh, yeah, like I said before, we actually do concentrate on what is uh, lying in front of us a lot. And um, um, I do think the material is strong enough and uh, I wouldn't focus on the past anymore at all. You know, I do get why Tom is uh, thinking about that. But uh, Tom, like I told you, I'm 98% uh, correct. So just trust me on this. <laughs> <laughs> wow, 98%, that's, that's, that, that's a high number. I, I just yeah, think the other 2% is just, uh, you can discuss them, you know. it's not. Yeah, uh... I think as long as the expectations are set beforehand, I think fans will accept those expectations. It's that yeah. it's, I think is when bands become a little bit ambiguous about what they want. That's when you start to run into problems because you, you're not really being honest from from the get go. And and I think what you guys are doing with this album, like I said, there's a little bit of of connecting with the past, but it's a lot more about looking towards the future and sound and lyrical content and and the overall design. And I think that, in my humble opinion, I mean, I think that's the path that you guys should take. And even though I felt like there should be more guitars on this record. Uh, I did get a lot of great guitar solos, so I'm not I'm not overly upset about it. I thought the album was a lot better than I was expecting coming in, uh, and that and I mean this as 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 a compliment. The album is a lot stronger than what the first two singles even indicated. Even though you know Six Caliber, it's freaking outstanding. That song is a banger of a track. I love that song. Uh, what What's your favorite song, actually? Yeah, it's it's just. I was like, I was telling my son, how is this not the first single? This song is just like mind blowing good. Like it's just <laughs> good. I, like you, I'll be singing that song for the rest of my life. It's just a great freaking track. <laughs> and, like, I want to hear it. it. If we ever come to the USA, you should come on stage and sing it with me. Oh, I think that's when the fans will run to the doors. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll be more than happy to introduce you guys when you guys come to Toronto. I'm more than happy to introduce you to the crowd. But don't yeah. ask me to sing unless I have some backing tracks of you singing and I'm just kind of like lip singing. Then then that I can do. That I can Fair do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got one last question for you guys. Uh, and this question actually came from our Patreon. One of our Patreon uh, asked this question and I thought it was really interesting uh, because then it became also my question. 
you guys have a great world that you've created for Angus McSix. That there's great characters in this world. There's great dynamics, great stories. When are we going to be seeing some 1980s inspired Mattel action figures of Angus McSix? That's a very good question. And uh, I think the boss of Napalm Records already offered it to us for the next album. So this might be a thing that comes in the deluxe special edition box, whatever it will be called for the next album. Wow. Maybe. License to print money. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I love it. I love it. I, I got to get myself one. I got to get... And, and it better come with six caliber. It better come with a sword. So. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. it has to. It has to. I, I was a big fan of He-Man myself, you know, so uh, I know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about those action figures. Yeah, I'm a big fan myself as well. I grew up in that era of watching those uh, those cartoons, so definitely, uh, definitely looking forward to this. There you go. That's that, not a real one. Right? The more modern yeah. one. That's not the throwback. That's that's no, not... no, no. It's not it's like the the uh, yeah the modern versions. Like uh, what is it called? Uh, loyal subjects. Yeah, that's like those super small ones. But I I think they're like uh, very nice uh, versions actually. Yeah, every, everything that is old is becoming new again. So uh, I, I love this throwback aspect. Uh, I want to thank both of you for taking the time. Like I said at the beginning of this conversation, considering how much I've, I've joked about uh, Angus McSix, the, the name of the band and all of that stuff, I honestly thought, I'm going to ask, but I, these guys are not going to want to talk to me. So I, I just want to <laughs> say... Yet, man. As, uh, thank, you, nice. thank you thank you for being good sports. Thank you for, for being here, talking about the band, talking about the record. I really enjoyed this record. It's a really fun record to listen to. Uh, so thank you for getting together and creating this band and continuing this legacy. Uh, and all the best with the release, with the tours, with the shows. Cheers. And uh, thank you very much for this entertaining interview. It was good, good fun for us as well. I guess. Yeah. See? Yeah. Thank you, you guys. All the best. See you.